Hi, this is Jeff Lockridge with Connecty Systems. Today I'll be talking about VPC ingress routing. First, let's talk about how things were before VPC ingress routing. Let's say you operate in a highly regulated environment. You need to have a firewall to meet some kind of compliance requirement. Let's say your service is publicly reachable from the internet. Your your service exists within the Amazon VPC in private subnets. You're fronting that service with firewalls by some uh, vendor. In this case, let's say you have elastic IP addresses, public IP addresses associated with the firewalls. This is required to get traffic into the VPC. Let's say you have an EIP associated with the first firewall's elastic network interface and then another EIP associated with the second firewall's elastic network interface. In this design, the traffic is pulled into the VPC using those public IP addresses. The firewall processes the packet. It goes to the EC2 instances in the private subnet and then traffic either goes back through the firewall or goes directly back to the IDW depending on how you've configured the firewalls. This design doesn't scale. For every service behind the firewall, you need EIPs. The default limit for EIPs in the VPC is five per region. You can request more. However, any design that relies on EIPs to scale is not going to scale the way that you probably want it to. VPC ingress routing was announced at reInvent in 2019. It's been a little over a year now. I'm recording this video in January of 2021. The thrust of this feature is that it simplifies the inclusion of security appliances into your VPC. These could be firewalls, IDS, IPS, you name it. Um, this feature makes it easier to use those appliances from the AWS marketplace. Immediately after the feature was announced, the usual suspects, Aviatrix, Palo Alto, Fortinet, announced reference architectures that use VPC ingress routing. At the time of launch, VPC ingress routing was supported by both CloudFormation and Terraform. All right, let's take that same scenario as before. This time though, with VPC ingress routing, we can use public IP addresses, not elastic IP addresses, on those services that operate in the private subnet. So immediately we have an advantage that we're not using EIPs, we're using the ephemeral public IP addresses that you get when you launch instances. Now, you may be confused, public IP addresses in, the, in, the, in private subnets, that doesn't make sense, does it? Well, it does now with VPC ingress routing, but let's take a little closer look here. The way that we get traffic into the VPC is that there is an ingress routing table that gets associated with the IGW. And in that routing table, we have the slash 24s, the two subnets for those private subnets, the 172.16.1.0 slash 24 and the 172.16.2.0 slash 24. Those are routed on ingress towards those private instances. Now keep in mind, at the IGW, there are NAT bindings from the private IP address to the public. So in your DNS, if you have, let's say, an A record for these services tied to the public IP addresses, that gets translated at the IGW into the private addresses. So that once that translation takes place, traffic is routed to the firewalls, through the firewalls, to the private subnets, and then either back through the firewalls or directly back to the IGW, depending again on how your firewalls are configured. All right, so how does this look in the console? Well, this special VPC ingress routing table is bound to an IGW using what AWS calls an EDS association. So you can see here in the console on the EDS associations tab, I've associated an IGW as an EDGE association. Let's take a look at VPC ingress routing with automation. Starting off with CloudFormation, you can see here there's a route table that's defined as normal. Then when you bind that routing table, you actually bind it to the IGW and that's done through this gateway route table association resource type. Moving over to Terraform, fairly standard resource here, route table association. Instead of binding a subnet to a routing table, you're binding a routing table to a 
IDW in this case. All right, so that's VPC ingress routing. If you have any questions, please contact me.